I love the story of the father who took his son to the pet store. He'd been promising him for a long time, we're going to get a new puppy. So they got up and went to the store. And you know when you walk in one of those places, there's just dogs and kittens everywhere that you want. Yeah. And the dad had talked to him a long time and said, now you got to be careful. I want you to make a really good decision and think carefully about it. Well, they walked in. The little boy's eyes went straight to one crate where there was a little puppy whose tail was just wagging ferociously. Looked like it was smiling at him. He said, I want that one, Daddy. He said, now, son, we talked about this. We're going to look at every puppy in the store, and then we're going to let you choose one. So they looked at every puppy in the store, and when they came back to that little puppy that he had first seen, his tail was still going like this, and the, the little boy pointed. He said, I want that one, Daddy. I want that one with the happy ending. <laughs> and don't we all? Yeah. We all want a life that is filled with joy and laughter, but I know that life can be painful. You know that. But if God is God and he is who he says he is, then joy and laughter are part of his plan for our life. Today we begin a new series called Legacy, and there are two big ideas in this series. Would you grab your notes and follow along, whether you're at Lenexa or over in the venue, up at Lansing, joining us there, or at the Speedway, or on the internet. We are thrilled you're here. I'm Dan Sutherland, one of our pastors. This is the best teacher in my family, my wife, Mary. How about a hand for her today? Would you do that? Thank you. Thank you so much. In this series called Legacy, we're going to be exploring two big truths over the next four weeks. The first one is this. My number one opportunity to leave a legacy in this world is my home. It is not my work. It is not my neighborhood. The number one opportunity to make a difference in the world is at home. That's where it begins. And the second idea in this series is that family is God's number one tool for helping us become more like Jesus. Have you ever wondered why there's somebody in your family that drives you nuts? <laughs> It's because God has put them there as heavenly sandpaper to rub the rough edges off of you to help you become more like Jesus. So we're going to be exploring the idea that home should be a trophy case for the love and the power and the grace of Jesus Christ. It is our legacy. Today, Mary and I are going to talk about the legacy of laughter next week. We'll be talking about the legacy of love, how God puts kids beyond our own immediate family in our lives for us to love on them. Week three, we'll be talking about what is your life song? If somebody looked at your life and summarized it in a word or a phrase, what legacy are you leaving behind? And then week four, we'll talk about the legacy of kids and how God gives us these wonderful, awful critters <laughs> for us to raise and how awesome it is today the legacy of laughter. Jesus lived and died so that we could have a miserable life. No. That is not what it says in the scripture. It's not. He lived and died so we could have an abundant life. John 10, 10 says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more what? Abundantly. And that word literally means going beyond. It means exuberant. In other words, an abundant life is a life that is filled with joy. And God created us to be filled with joy. Our lives are reasons to celebrate. And they can be filled with joy in the midst of a joyless world. Don't yeah. miss this. You can have joy in the midst of your greatest pain. That's right. That's what separates the Christ follower, that even in the difficult moments, God brings us joy. So here's the big idea for today's teaching, the thing Mary and I are going to center on for the next few moments. We need to turn up the joy and laughter in our homes. I don't have to be in your home to know. You need more joy. You need more laughter, and I don't have to be in your home to know that you've already had an opportunity to choose that kind of joy today. Something didn't work right at home. You got up late, or you had to wait on your spouse, an experience he did I've not. never had. He did or you've not had have the kids wait. fight on the way to church, or man, here was my deal. I've been in <laughs> Cuba and Haiti for the last 10 days, 
and, and I just, I'm so overwhelmed with what I saw and experienced. I, I'm not even ready to process it yet. We'll be sharing that in the next few weeks, I'm sure. But I took every pair of jeans and every <laughs> T-shirt that I had on this trip. And when I got home late yesterday afternoon, they were all dirty. Ten days of, of Haitian and Cuban dirt and wear on them. So I threw them in the washing machine, and Mary came along later. He threw them. In the I, I threw them in the washing machine, and Men Mary came along it. later and put them in the dryer. And I got up this morning to put them on and remembered I had not used any soap. <laughs> so the Doesn't dirt work. is now just caked <laughs> on. It just got wet and soaked in further. You, you know, I, I'm going, babe, you're going to have to teach, or I'm going to have to teach naked, and that's not good. <laughs> no. You know, we're going. There's the thought that'll scar you for life. Yeah. So, you know, what are we? What are we going to do with 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 this with this? I deal? got a hand towel and soaked it with hot water and scrubbed the dirt off of his jeans. I think they're still wet. But, they're still wet. But they worked, you know. And we were laughing. Well, I was laughing. Now you can either lose it or you can laugh. <laughs> and I started losing it, and I thought, wait a minute, we're talking about laughter today. I mean, God's up in heaven going, he ain't got no jeans. <laughs> Check it out. We've got to be able to turn up the joy and the laughter meter in our home today. So wherever you are in the good, the bad, and the ugly of life, I want you mm. to take notes like it matters today because it does. The God of this world mm. wants to turn up your joy and your laughter. He wants to create a legacy of laughter in and through your home. Here's step one. The first step is to realize that we were made for joy and laughter. Yeah. God did not create us to be his puppets. Hmm. We were created by God for God. We were created in love, by love, and for love. We were created in joy for joy. God didn't just create us and then go, oops. God never has to say, oops. He created us in response to a specific plan for your life. Did you know that? God has a specific plan, and that plan will bring you joy. Because when you know him and you have his love flowing through you, you will know his joy as well. Yeah. John 15, 11 says it this way. Jesus said, I've told you these things mm -hmm. so that you can have the same joy I have. Yeah. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. He wants us to have the same joy he has and that our joy will be the fullest possible joy. He created you to enjoy you, and don't miss this, he created you for you to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. The world looks at us many times as Christ followers, and we've got yeah. gloom, despair, and agony on us. I mean, we're just dragging. No wonder they don't want what we have. I don't want that. <laughs> There's some Christians that need to be shot and put out of my misery. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Of course. <laughs> got to add that. We've got to come to the place where we understand Jesus put joy in us and wants to let, let joy run and reign through us. He created us for joy and laughter. But this next thing is important, too. You've got to recognize mm. the value of joy and laughter. We want to spend a little time unpacking this, not just that you're created for it, but it's good for you. Yep. It's good for you. It is medicine that God has created for our souls. Look at this first thought. Mm. Letter A there, joy and laughter bring healing. Did you know that? Mm. There's medical scientific evidence that joy and laughter bring healing, and the Bible tells us that as well. A happy heart is like good medicine, but a broken spirit mm. drains your strength. Have you had that experience? I mean, just being around somebody that's yep. broken and down, you just feel worn out yep. when you leave their presence. But you're with somebody that's, that's got joy and got laughter, and you feel better after you've been with them. What is that? It's medicine. It's medicine for the mm. soul. It's important stuff. When we lived in South Florida, uh, University of Miami Hospital began to develop what they called a laughter program because they had discovered these documented truths that have been in the Word of God for thousands of years. They discovered that laughter exercises the lungs, stimulates circulation, helps reduce pain, and reduces tension, and it boosts the immune system. So wow. what they're saying is that laughter really is good medicine. We were created to illustrate this truth. If we laugh more days, we'll have more days to laugh. And our homes need to be places filled with joy and filled with laughter. Joy is healing. It is. Also, joy and laughter bring strength. Would you write that in? Mm. They bring strength 
Many times in the Psalms and as well in the book of Nehemiah, it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. When we discover his joy, we are stronger. It produces a greater strength within us. A life without joy is like a wagon without springs. It just bumps. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. I just <laughs> did five days of Cuban roads. You have never experienced anything like Cuban roads. I mean, there are two and three foot potholes, and we're four of us good sized guys in this little <laughs> bitty Corolla sized car. And we're traveling five hours down to another church to visit there on these roads. And, and at first, the game was dodge the potholes. And then it became hit the potholes <laughs> because it's a rental car. <laughs> I am God's reason Dad. you never want to buy a used rental car. That's the truth. Rental is, is a Latin word that means abuse me. I, it's really not, but I'm convinced it ought to be. So we're just, all of a sudden, the, the five-hour ride that was pain and turmoil became, woohoo! that was a good one, hit another one. <laughs> all that shifted was that joy and laughter bring strength. They bring strength for the potholes of life. We've got to have it. We've got to, we've got to go through it. This story you tell is just, just killer. I had a friend who I would probably describe as frail, or negative. I mean, if there was a donut, she saw the hole, you know, and she was always sad. I mean, that's hard, but she did. And she just seemed to have this dark side to her. Yeah. And when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, I was really concerned about how she would deal with that because that's tough. I know my mom had that. And so we, she went through a mastectomy, radiation, chemotherapy, a very tough, about almost a year of treatment. And she was coming back to work, and I was there the day she came back, and I was really concerned, as we all were, how do we respond to her? What do we do? What do we say? We needn't have worried, because God had used that year to change this woman. She walked in with this huge smile on her face and a big sign around her neck, and on the sign was a huge black arrow pointing down, and the words on the sign said, it was this one. <laughs> She became a different person. She said, I have learned to choose joy yeah. no matter what. Now, you can't help that you're dealing with that, 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 no. that cancer, something that painful. It made her strong. But it's either going to make you a martyr or it's going to bring you joy. And that is your choice. Yeah. We've all got stuff to be martyred over. Stuff where we can be down and decide that life is tough and very bad and no good. But God says it'll bring you strength. Mm. Also, write this one in if you would. Joy and laughter make the ordinary special. A home that knows how to laugh is able to take the everyday stuff of life mm. and turn it into crazy joy. I like what 1 Timothy 6, 17 says. God richly blesses us with, with everything. Why? For us to enjoy. For us to enjoy. Many of you are familiar with the 100 days at the shack where for 100 days we're focusing on the fact that half the world lives on $2 a day or less. I've just spent 10 days with people in that half of the world. And I have never seen the kind of poverty I saw in those two countries, but I have never seen the joy among Christ followers that they have either. They have so little stuff and so much joy. They've learned to make the everyday stuff bring joy. And this whole thing of the shack, you know, it's, it's what can you give up for 100 days to remind you how blessed we are and to move us toward what we can do to help others. And the pastors have come with, with some creative things. You knew Pastor Sean would do something nuts. <laughs> He's going barefoot for 100 days. Now, in September, that's not such a big deal. In December, mm -hmm. snow, that'll be different. And one little boy in our church who loves Pastor Sean, this is Eli Decker. He is the son of Lauren and Jen Decker decided he also wanted to go barefoot for 100 days. We have a priceless video of how you take the ordinary crisis of life and it becomes funny. Check this out. Hey, Eli. Eli. Why are you crying, buddy? Because I, I don't, I don't, I like to say I haven't done that. You'd like to do what? Give up what? 
shoes. Why? Because I like to. You want to give up shoes for how long? For how, how much? For 100 days. Uh, no, you cannot do that. You're going to have to wear shoes. I'm sorry, buddy. You can do What, sweetie? Crying. No. <laughs> it's great. Is it priceless? <laughs> I mean, these parents take this tough moment and turn it into this extraordinary <laughs> thing. That is just so awesome. You know, sometimes we think, if I can just change this, I'll be happy. If I can get that promotion, that house, that spouse, that kid, that thing, I'll be there. My joy will be complete. No, it won't. No. We've got to learn to have it now in the ordinary, everyday stuff of life because it's about daily celebration. It's a big idea. It is. I think we tend to place such big expectations on the big holidays which I tend to do. Oh, tend to do. Oh, <laughs> ay, ay, ay. She's unbelievable. I mean, because she grew up with Christmases and birthdays with no gifts, I mean, Mary grew up in poverty. She lived in a shack. It's an unbelievable place. We have gifts at our house for Valentine's Day. We have gifts for St. Patrick's Day. I get a gift on Mother's Day. Well. Explain that to me. We have gifts just all come. year long, but it's not just the big days that we celebrate. No. We but, celebrate little stuff. I asked the kids, I said, you know, you remember what we used to celebrate? And Jared, our son, he's the first one. He said, we, I remember we celebrated Tuesday once. <laughs> I said, what do you remember? He said, you came and you pulled me and you pulled Dana out of school and took us to lunch. And when I asked you why, he said, you, you said, it's Tuesday. So celebrate Tuesday. There's no reason to have to. You don't have to have a reason just because it's Tuesday. We celebrated half birthdays. Yes, because it's too long to wait for a whole year for a birthday, it for is. crying out loud. We celebrated haircuts. <laughs> Those are good. Uh, uh, we celebrated report cards. Yes. That's a stretch sometimes. Uh, braces on. Certainly celebrated braces off. Bought new pair of jeans. Worth two parties right there. We celebrated if Dan came home early. Heck, we celebrated if Dan just came home. You know, we just... <laughs> We were just looking for a reason to have a party, and I discovered that's what life should be. It is. My husband's a master at this, and I'm going to tell you a story that I do have permission to tell. Um, no. Yes. You said he that just at 8.30, and I didn't he know just which doesn't story remember. it was. No. Um, I, we lived in South Florida, and uh, we were members of a church, the Ambassador Church. We did a Christmas pageant every year, and it was one of those where we did seven nights in a row, you know, and you're exhausted, and we were all in it. And so we were going home to Texas for Christmas. So the last night of the pageant, I looked at him, and I said, if we are not going home naked for Christmas, we have to do laundry tonight. So he said, I'll help you. So it's 11, 11.30 at night. We're sitting in our family room in our South Florida home on a couch that backed up to a wall of windows, and there's a TV. We're watching a Christmas special, and we're doing load after load after load of laundry. And finally, I guess, it, yeah, I know it was after midnight, he comes in, and he says, this is the last load of laundry. And I look up, and he has a pair of my underwear on his head as a hat. I just cracked up. I was slap happy by this time, but I wasn't the only one laughing. No, no. I hear outside our windows people laughing. <laughs> our youth had a Christmas tree decorating contest every year. Oh, it gets a lot worse. And the ugliest tree always was brought to our home. And they had chosen that particular night to deliver that tree. And so our youth worker, our youth pastor, his wife were all standing, and some of the youth outside of the window cracking up at their pastor with his wife's underwear on his head. <laughs> what is he? I want to put a for sale sign in the yard and move as quickly as possible. He invites them in for hot chocolate. <laughs> some of them are still in counseling today, I think. But... Um, that story has lived on for year after year after year. It all, 
He loves yeah. it when I tell it. Yeah, I'm really enjoying that. But That's you can it. take the most ordinary things and the not so ordinary things yeah. and turn them into joy and laughter. Let's move on to the next step. Shall okay, we? right yes, there. I, I, I think so. Mm -hmm. Not only do we need to recognize that joy and laughter are gifts from God and recognize their value, but we have to learn the habit mm. of joy and laughter. Now, this is really where I want everyone to listen very closely today. Some of you are saying, I'm just not that funny. You know, yeah, I know some people that laugh a lot or they do life that way, but it's just not me. No, no. We can learn the habit of joy and laughter because the God of joy and laughter, if we are Christ followers, lives in right. us. Listen to what Paul said here. I have learned. Do you see mm -hmm. that word? I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether I'm well-fed or I'm hungry, whether I'm living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. You have to learn joy and laughter. It's a habit that we have to pick up. When God created the world one day at a time, at the end of each day of creation, he gave himself a five. He said, that's good. That's Woo! Right. That's right. Let's celebrate. And regardless of what our day has in it, there's a moment at the end of the day where we ought to be able to say, Gloria Dios! Go God! Mm. Look at what you did. We have to learn the habit of joy and laughter. Here's a couple of practical ways to learn to do that. The first one is to check your joy meter at your heart. Mm. Check your joy meter. The scripture, particularly the Psalms, are filled with verse after verse after verse that tells us that we are to bless God. It doesn't say we're supposed to feel like it. You're not going to find that in scripture because you can't trust your feelings. But what you can trust is your God, and he is always worthy of praise. Hmm. And that starts in the heart. Do you really know him? Is he really your personal savior? Because what's down in your heart is going to work its way out in your life. In the words that you speak, are they filled with joy? Or are they filled with sarcasm and anger? Are your, are your words filled with joy? Or are they filled with negativity or criticism? What's in your heart is going to come out. Psalm 1611. By the way, my mom used to say it like this. What's down the well is going to come up in the bucket. What we, the words we speak yeah. and how we live in our home is what's in our heart. Psalm 1611 says, being with you will fill me with joy. God's presence, a relationship with him, fills us with joy. Yeah. I think sometimes we don't understand what joy is. It's not just this deliriously happy, no. ha ha, everything's hilarious. Joy is a deeply rooted confidence that God is in control. It's and it really true. does not matter how much we lose here. I read the whole book, front to cover. We win. It matters what we have there. Isaiah 61.10 says, The Lord makes me very happy. All that I am rejoices in my God. Joy is the result of Jesus. Can I add heart. a footnote here that is really important? Kids pick this up. Yeah, they do. And they naturally draw to joyful people. They pick it up. If there's no joy and laughter in our homes, guess what? They're drawn somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But if your home is the craziest, zaniest, laughingest, most outrageous place there is, even though you make tons of mistakes, joy and laughter mm -hmm. covers them over. It does. Our kids' friends still show up at our house, and we live a thousand miles away. And they know they can stay anytime, and they know they can hang anytime. And they will say, Mr. Sutherland, Mrs. Sutherland, we loved hanging out at your house because there was always a joke going on. There was always laughter going on. There was always something strange with underwear going on. I mean, just this whole thing of you knew how to laugh, and kids are drawn to that. Mm. We've got to recognize that piece. We also have moments, write this in, where you've got to choose joy. Yeah. Joy is a choice. I love James 1. It says you're going to have a lot of trials, a lot of trouble, a lot of tribulations. Consider it pure joy. You cannot avoid the pain That's in right. the potholes of life. You cannot. No. I'm not talking about some silly absence of reality that life isn't hard. It is. I'm talking about the ability to choose joy in the middle of it. Joy is a choice. 
I really have learned something in my life. I, I need to learn a lot more, but this is one that God has really taught me. My inner perspective does not have to reflect my outer circumstance. Hmm. My father died when I was five. He was an alcoholic. My mother worked two and three jobs a day to raise three kids. We did live in a shack. My mother would stuff newspaper in the cracks to keep the cold out. There was a hole in our floor, and she used to say, that hole's big enough to throw a dog through. Never didn't know what that meant. No, but I just cracked up every time she said it. Yep. I know what it's like to suffer with clinical depression. I know what it's like to be molested as a, a teenage uh, child by a trusted family doctor. I know that life is filled with pain. But I also know that even in the midst of it all, God mm. is God. And we can choose our outer perspective. Chuck Swindoll, great mm. teacher, Bible um, scholar was teaching a series on choosing joy no matter what your circumstance is. And there was a single woman in his church who um, really wanted to be married and didn't really understand why she was not. But through this series, she had learned that she could make a choice to be content and happy right where she was. So she wrote Pastor Chuck a message, and uh, this is what it said. She said, Pastor, thank you for this series. I have decided to choose joy whether or not I'm married or single. And she said, but I do pray this prayer every night. I take a pair of men's trousers and hang it over the end of, of my bed, and I pray this prayer. Father in heaven, hear my prayer and grant it if you can. I've hung a pair of trousers here. Please fill them with a man. <laughs> the pursuit of joy really is a matter of choice. It is. The, the last thing I want to say here is you, sometimes we have to change our focus. To choose our joy, to see the joy and the laughter God wants to bring us is a matter of changing your focus. Jeremiah 29, 11, a phenomenal promise to all of us who, who honor God and follow Christ. For I know the plans I have for you, declares mm. the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yeah. God's got a plan that is a good plan. Doesn't mean only good things happen. It means that he takes the good and the bad and the ugly and he brings good out of it. Romans 8, 28 is either true or it's not. God either uses the good and the bad in this world to bring us joy or he doesn't. We believe that it's true. And since it's true, our life should be filled with joy. Sometimes you've got to change your focus. You focus on the stuff that is wrong. Wow. Mm. Joy drains away. We focus on the things that are right. Wow. Joy soars. Sometimes we've got to change our focus. It's not about am I winning or losing at the right, moment. Right. It's about is there joy in the game of life. When our kids were little, Dan and some of the other pastors at our church coached their uh, softball team. And the wives were uh, very helpful in offering suggestions to the refs and to the coaches. Because obviously we could see things they could not see, you see. Obviously. Obviously. Yes. So I was amazed at the game. You know, we wanted our kids to experience the joy of winning. Um, and our kids wanted to experience the joy of the game. Our third ba baseman used to chase butterflies. Drove me nuts. In the middle of the game. This is a six-year-old girl's softball team. Yeah, but she was third baseman. And the, and the outfielder, you know, was like turning uh, somersaults out in the field or running over to talk to his really good friend on first base. And, and he didn't help anything. I mean, he told them before the game, you know, if we win, we're going out for pizza. Yeah! If we lose, we're going out for pizza. Yeah! <laughs> you know? But you know what? Those kids enjoyed every moment of every game, win or lose. And we need to go through the daily steps of life in the same way. Here's my wrap-up thought for you. Write it in. I really think if we're going to turn the joy and the laughter up in our homes, it's time to quit moaning about mm -hmm. what is wrong. Moaning and complaining has become the national pastime of America. Yeah. Every comedian, every politician, mm -hmm. every commentator... I hate saying it, many preachers, many pastors, we've simply gotten into the gloom, despair, and agony on us moment. Mm -hmm. You want to see a people that ought to have gloom, despair, and agony, go to Haiti. Yeah. 
go to Cuba and look at their joy in the midst of having nothing and you go, God, Mm. how have we lost this? It's time to quit moaning about what's wrong in our families and start celebrating what is right. You learn to celebrate what's right in your family. The joy and the laughter will go up. I want us to end with a prayer. And it's a dangerous prayer. Here it is. I'm going to pray for God to turn up the joy and laughter in every home represented this week. You better be ready to laugh. Somebody's going to have a flat tire on the way home. You better be ready to laugh. The in-laws are coming and they haven't told you. You better be ready to laugh. God is going to turn up, if you'll allow him, the opportunity for joy and laughter this week because we want to leave a legacy of laughter in our homes. If you know the person sitting next to you well enough, grab their hand. And if you don't know them, but they're really cute, grab their hand anyway. so bad. And let's pray together for God to show up with this kind of joy and laughter. Jesus... Forgive me for how I moan and groan about family. Lord, they're not perfect. I'm not either. But I want to laugh more. I want to have joy more. And I pray right now you'd turn up the laughter and joy meter in every home represented today. And that we get to the end of this week and say, wow, that is the joy of Jesus Christ. We make this prayer in your name. Amen.